This video is going to start off with a disclaimer. The Blackmagic Design Ursa Mini Pro G2, which we're going to be talking about in this video, was actually sent to me by Blackmagic Design, and I have a pretty good relationship with them as a company. In fact, I actually shot one of the launch trailers for the Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. Now, I like to think that this would not affect my opinions of the product. I like to think I could go in totally level-headed and unbiased, it could play a, a factor subconsciously. I like to think that it doesn't, but it could, so I thought I'd disclose that right at the very start of this video. Anyway, yeah, in this video, we are going to be talking about the Ursa Mini Pro G2, which has been my workhorse camera for around about the past four or five months, and I've been using a mix of the Pocket Cinema Camera 4K and the Ursa G2 over the past handful of projects. Thing number one that I love about the G2 is the color science. The way that it renders people's skin tones is incredibly natural. It kind of has like a, a nice soft flattering look. It doesn't bring out any strange kind of redness or pigmentation that you wouldn't really be able to see with the naked eye but for some reason some digital cameras could just really highlight those and that coupled with the fantastic black magic design raw codec that these cameras shoot in the pocket 4k and also the ursa g2 means that bringing the footage into post is is lovely because you bring it in you do a base grade the natural colors look great already once you've got it all balanced up and then as soon as you start tweaking it and pulling it, you know that you have plenty of data in the image. It's not going to start breaking down. Uh, you have plenty of information to work with. And on the topic of information, the dynamic range that you have available is great. I mean, I am someone who really likes to shoot into the sun, which can be a bit of an issue for a lot of cameras, but this thing's got plenty of dynamic range. And also I was incredibly impressed by the amount of detail that you have in the shadows. It's It takes a long time before things start descending into noise and grain. And that is also somewhere where this camera performs just light years ahead of the Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. I love the Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, but in terms of shadow detail, that thing, that thing is the one. Now, because I often work in small teams, AKA just me and my girlfriend, literally the smallest of teams, uh, going to and from the filter case and grabbing various different strengths of ND can be pretty time consuming. And we're often working in fairly fast paced environments. We're often in a bit of a crunch. Just having the ND filters built into the camera and being able to decide how much depth of field you want in each shot uh, is, is so, so nice. Now I would say one of the secret biggest strengths of Blackmagic Design cameras is the menu system. The menu system is fantastic. By far the most responsive menu system of any camera and it's so clear is so straightforward everything's just a huge box it's completely idiot proof everything is easy and accessible and actually on the topic of that something that a lot of people don't realize is that most cinema cameras take a long time to turn on something like a red cinema camera will take about 25 seconds to boot up so if you have something you want to shoot you kind of hit the on button you're like come on get going come on and then it always feels like it takes twice as long when you actually want it to boot up whereas the ursa g2 just flicks straight on which it seems it seems like something that should be there already it seems like all cameras should have that but most cameras don't so the fact that this camera has it is just a huge plus the connectivity to the camera just by default as the camera comes we've got a number of sdi ports you've got xlr inputs you've got various forms of power inputs lens data stuff time code and actually in a similar vein one of my favorite things about the ursa g2 is the various different formats that you can record to so you can record to cfast cards you can record to ssds you can buy a storage module that attaches to the back of the Ursa G2 which will allow you to record to slightly bigger SSDs. There's all sorts of versatility there and most importantly it's all fairly cost effective. Now would I if I'm going to nitpick would I like it if there was some form of lock on that USB-C mechanism so I can actually lock the cable in place that would be that would be fantastic because it does feel a little bit scary knowing that my whole shot could be ruined just by boop. <laughs> but you know that's a nitpick now one feature that isn't a particularly high priority for me but i know is a strong point of this camera is the high frame rate modes uh, we did shoot some slow motion for the osha film i think we did 96 frames a second for in 4.6k there'll be text on the screen calling me stupid if i got that wrong but i'm fairly certain we did that uh, and that was useful and it's nice to know that it is capable of shooting even more crazy frame rates when you start dropping the quality i think it goes up to about 300 frames a second in hd which is that's massive for people who are interested in that sort of thing i just i don't tend to shoot in slow motion very much like anything in life nothing is perfect okay there are a few 
a few little issues that I've run into with my use of the Ursa G2 over the past couple months. I'm realising now I'm doing a lot of hand movement during this video, aren't I? I'm going to be editing this back just thinking what on earth am I doing? Anyway, the first point to mention is build quality. As much as this thing does feel like it's built like a... I would say it feels like it's built like a Land Rover Defender. It's not quite built like a tank, okay? It, it has a few has a few little flaws, a few little things that I feel are a little bit flimsy. Uh, one of the most important ones is the hinge where the screen folds out. I understand it's very difficult to make like a solid hinge, but as soon as that thing's flipped out, I'm so nervous because if I break that, you know, that's the end of the shoot. It's going to be really difficult to control the camera, so you have to be very careful, and it just it feels like it's on the edge, and if you pushed it a little bit too far, it could be could be end of days it's not the easiest camera in the world to balance on a gimbal it's kind of a bit of an awkward shape in that it's a little bit longer than say for example a red so when you balance it it has to be pushed right the way to the back and if you put a decently heavy lens on there then it's still going to be front heavy so you start having to get counterweights involved and things with that being said once again, a bit of a nitpick. And actually on the topic of nitpicking, this is the mother of all nitpicks. It has absolutely no bearing on how good it is as a camera, has no bearing on the quality of the image that comes out of it because the quality of the image that comes out of it is absolutely gorgeous. But it's not, it's not a looker. That's, that's all I'm gonna say, it's not a looker. Anyway, those are my thoughts on the Ursa G2. Um, I, hope, I hope that you found them useful. I'm gonna continue using this camera for the foreseeable future until something else comes along that perhaps betters it but at the minute <sighs> this is my go-to i i'm i'm really really loving shooting projects on it and i can't wait to shoot more projects on it once i'm allowed out the house anyway i hope you enjoyed catch you in the next video see ya